six hours. Secretary Kerry has spoken with UN Envoy Stefan Di Mistura, the Foreign Ministers of Turkey, of Qatar, Saudi Arabia. Of course, he has spoken also with Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov, including today. And Secretary Kerry told Foreign Minister Lavrov that the regime is bombing groups who are party to the cessation of hostilities. Even though violence is down in many parts of Syria, the regime is acting against groups that want to be part of this peace process. Secretary Kerry made clear that the aid is not flowing, even though we were assured again and again that permissions would be forthcoming, even though UN trucks have been idling, filled with precious food, as mothers can't feed their kids. So Secretary Kerry shared all this with Foreign Minister Lavrov, but he didn't have to, because Russia is fighting alongside the Assad regime. Russia knows exactly what's happening in Syria. They know exactly which groups are terrorists and which groups are opposition groups who want to be part of a political transition and who want a multi-confessional, pluralistic Syrian society on the back end. They know, they know the difference. And so why are we having this meeting tonight? It's a diversion from what is happening on the ground in Syria. When you don't like the facts, try to create attention somewhere else. It's the classic magician's sleight of hand. Get the world and the media to focus here so they maybe take their eye a little bit off what's happening over there. What's happening over there is so important. It's jeopardizing something that gives the Syrian people a chance. So again, we encourage the Russian Federation to call emergency meetings with the Assad regime and to deliver the Assad regime to this agreement that we so want to work. I want to make just one last point before I head into the consultations. Russia has billed itself as the world's defender against terrorism. And part of what it is alleging tonight is that somehow the United States is undermining the fight against ISIL. Indeed, the Russian spokesperson, I believe, came out and thought somehow we were complicit in even trying to protect ISIL. Really? American citizens have been beheaded by this group. We are leading a 67-country coalition to destroy this group. ISIL has lost 40% of its territory. This is serious for us. It is not a game. And that spokesperson who suggested complicity really should be embarrassed. We are trying to be serious about ensuring that Syrians can wake up in the morning and imagine that they can actually also go to sleep at the end of the day. That there can be a political transition so this war ends and everything that goes along with it. Syria, the Syrian government, which also bills itself as the fighter against terrorists, allowed ISIL to grow and grow and grow. It was busy hitting markets and refugee camps, displaced camps, using chemical weapons that ISIL took root and prospered right beside the Syrian regime. The best way to contribute to the fight against ISIL and against al-Nusra, as Russia says it wants, is to stop bombing civilians and opposition groups who have signed up to the cessation of hostilities and deliver the Assad regime to implement what has been agreed. Assad's antics, his tactics, his strategy have been a gift to terrorists in Syria and well beyond. And these are terrorists who threaten us all. On that, we agree. There is a better way forward, but Russia really needs to stop the cheap,
point scoring and the grandstanding and the stunts and focus on what matters, which is implementation of something that we negotiated in good faith with them, which has shown it can reduce violence and shown it can save lives, but it needs to be implemented. And a meeting like this, a stunt like this, isn't helping anybody. Thank you. Ambassador, is there, is there any hope now for the Geneva deal, given that there's no U.S.-Russian cooperation? 